Hello, my name is Bjarne and I run a homepage called Boxy.com. Um, this is a tutorial on how to make a jQuery plugin and uh, the way I'm going to show it is I'm going to make a slideshow plugin for, uh, for jQuery and I, I've written a little HTML file here uh, with uh, some pictures inside a diff file, a diff, <laughs> diff file, <laughs> inside a diff um, and I included uh, jQuery of course and then uh, this is uh, the plugin we're going to write. Uh, so far it's just an empty file but if I load this page in, uh, in my browser then it's just a lot of pictures some delicious food and what I want to happen is that each picture is gonna they're gonna fade into each other um, yeah, so let's make that happen um, the first thing I always do when I write some code in, uh, in the other script is um, I always wrap it inside uh, an ify uh, I think some I think, uh, immediately invoked function expression sorry um, and the reason I do that is because then you get a closed scope so everything whatever you write inside that scope uh, it doesn't interfere with anything else being run on the same page you know if you have a big page a lot of things might be going on and uh, so it's a good way to ensure uh, closure um, and the way you make, if you don't know, the way you make uh, that kind of functions is uh, like this. Um, basically, what these two parentheses tell uh, uh, does is that they, they say that this function is going to be uh, uh, invoked right away. Uh, you can do this in different ways. You can you can actually place it outside the parentheses like this or you can place it inside, it makes no difference, it does the same thing. I just place them inside because, in at least in my head, it tells me that they belong to this function, uh, which is actually what they do. If you place them outside, it seems like they belong to this as a context, but that's not exactly how it works. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to pass it the jQuery uh, object, and as a parameter, we put the uh, dollar sign. You know, we always use the dollar sign when we make things in jQuery. So <coughs> we're gonna do that. Uh, the second thing I always do when I write code is I, I started to always run it in strict mode, and uh, that's basically because <coughs> sorry, because that disables a lot of things that you know, stupid mistakes. Uh, uh, things that are considered uh, bad style when we're programming uh, in JavaScript. So <coughs> I'm sorry about my throat. Like that. Um, so when you want to uh, when you want to make a, a plugin for for jQuery, what you do is you uh, you add a function to uh, the jQuery FN object. Uh, it's uh, the same as uh, the JavaScript. Um, uh, what's it called? Prototype. Uh, so you and you do that. Of course, you use the dollar sign because you just passed that as a parameter. And uh, following the dot, you you write the name of your plugin. And in our case, it's just going to be slide because it's a slideshow. Um, yes, that's it. Um, now the because we're making a, a plugin, normally when you have when you do when you make plugins, you would like the user to be able to customize something. Uh, so we're going to have a parameter called custom settings. So whatever this plugin does, uh, the user can put in some kind of custom settings in the form of a JSON string. Um, and when we have custom settings, of course, we would need some default settings, and I'm just going to call them settings. And we want the custom settings that the user passed to the function to be merged with the default settings. So if they have any changes, then it's going to be uh, it's going to be changed here. And we do that by using the extend function. And of course, it's going to be merged with uh, our uh, parameter like that. So 
basically what it does is the JSON string that we define between these uh, curly brackets are going to be merged with the custom settings that the user adds. If they add nothing, then of course nothing is going to happen. Uh, the first thing, uh, the first setting is uh, duration. How long is the picture going to be shown? And let's say four seconds. And the next thing is uh, animation time. How how fast is uh, the fade in from one picture to another going to happen? Um, this is any, any time. And let's say that's one second. Now the next thing I would like the user to be able to uh, to mess around with uh, is uh, the width. So, like, if you want to make a massive slideshow, you can just change, you know, how big it should be. But let's say the default is uh, 600 pixels, and I spell width wrong and height. Let's say the height is 400 pixels. So. so now we have default settings, and in the case the user add anything, uh, want to customize anything, it gets merged with that, and so we just enable customization. Now, uh, when you make a jQuery plugin, you always want to return the object on which the plugin is, uh, the function is, uh, is run. Um, and uh, when you're inside this function here, um, the reserved variable this refers to that object, the object that you just that we're gonna call it on. And in our case, that's gonna be this uh, this diff called slide. But we'll come back to that later. But that's what this refers to. Normally, when you write in directory, you would write uh, something like this, and that would refer to the object in hand, but uh, in this case it doesn't. It, it's actually like double wrapping and it like that. So we want to return this. And uh, when you make a plugin, often you would like it to iterate through whatever uh, number of uh, objects that are similar to the one that you passed. Like for instance, if, if I passed, uh, I only passed diff, uh, then it would iterate through all the diffs on the pages and make a slideshow out of each one, but in our case we're not going to do that. But it's a good idea, I think we'll do it anyway. We're going to iterate through if there's more than one, one object. And uh, the way we do that, uh, first we return this. Um, the way we do that is we use the each function, um, like this. Uh, that's just going to iterate through all the objects that we have. Um, inside here, we would like uh, a reference to the, uh, the current object, and uh, that is no longer this. This doesn't refer to the current object anymore. So uh, we're going to define a new one. We have to call it variable. So now we have a reference to the, the current object, the object, the first one on the iteration list, um, the current object. The next thing is um, we're making a uh, picture slide, so um, I think it would be useful to have a reference to the current picture. Uh, this image maybe. and. Let's use the children function first. Now this this would give us the first image. No, it would not give us the first image. Then we have to tell it only to look for images. This would give us the first image in the object past uh, this function was run upon. So it should give us the first image on the list. Uh, we would probably also need to know what the next image is because you know you can you can make a, a slideshow in various ways. One of them is that you have one picture fading out and another one fading in. 
um, but then if you have like a long uh, animation time then you would end up with a white screen or just uh, like a white square in between those fade ins and fade outs another way to do it is to place two pictures on top of each other and then uh, have the top picture fade out and then the, the picture underneath is gonna show uh, at the same time so you don't get that white screen in between and I think the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna have a uh, we're gonna store the next picture as well and uh, the next picture would naturally be next now this when I write this of course I'm assuming that there's more than one picture uh, if there's only one picture then this is gonna give you an error but I think it I think it's a reasonable assumption because we want to make a slideshow with just one picture. Now uh not we have defined that. I think actually I'm not sure how we're doing with time here, but I think I'm gonna stop this video here and then continue uh, in the next one. So see you in a bit.